justice has prevailed. How nice is it to see that justice does indeed sometimes prevail in the USA. So the Government Accountability Office has decided to deny Blue Origins and Dynetics protests and therefore SpaceX will build the only human landing system for the Artemis moon landings. How freaking awesome is that? So let's go through the details of this historic decision. So the Government Accountability Office, short GAO, decided that NASA's decision to award only SpaceX the contract for the human landing system of NASA's Artemis moon landing project is absolutely valid and does not violate any laws or regulations. Kenneth E. Patton, Managing Associate General Counsel for Procurement Law, I wish my title was half as impressive, said in a statement that in denying the protests, GAO first concluded that NASA did not violate procurement law or regulation when it decided to make only one award. NASA made it crystal clear in the competition that the decision whom to award was based on available funding and did reserve the right to make only a single award and even none at all should the funding not suffice. The GAO further said that there was no requirement for NASA to engage in discussions, amend or cancel the announcement as a result of the amount of funding available for the program. Wow, just wow! How much more of a complete and total victory can you achieve? Further, GAO next concluded that the evaluation of all three proposals was reasonable and consistent with applicable procurement law regulation and the announcement's terms. Well, we already know who will have a lot of fun and who will cry bitter tears in the next days. Jeff Bezos and Dynetics should have really paid better attention to what SpaceX was doing and how much funding they would require. I mean, come on, it's not like a secret what they are doing at Boca Chica and how much of his funds Elon is investing into the Starship program. It would have certainly been possible for both Blue Origin and Dynetics to find out the ballpark of how high SpaceX's bid was going to be and adjust their own bids accordingly. But unfortunately, greed probably kicked in. In Dynetics case, we are still completely and utterly baffled by the insanely high price tag of $9 billion for their lander but in Blue Origin's case, it is at least clear where the price tag of 5.99 billion comes from. Namely, Lockheed and Northrop are also in the team, and being old aerospace companies, they of course want an extra share of money for delivering very little. That's what they can do best. But of course, until not long ago, Jeff was busy with Amazon and only now did he realize his mistake of not paying enough attention to what was going on at Blue Origin. And now he even tried to rectify his mistake by offering NASA $2 billion in additional funding for the HLS program. But we'd say that's a classic case of too little, too late. Jeff really should have invested more of his time and money into his human lander back in 2020, when the whole thing was getting started. The GAO further concluded that the decision also concludes that the protesters could not establish any reasonable possibility of competitive prejudice, meaning that there is absolutely no evidence that SpaceX was treated favorably compared to the other contenders. If something, then SpaceX was actually treated disfavorably by NASA for the longest time, which only now started to change after SpaceX demonstrated the capability to successfully launch astronauts to the ISS with Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. The administrator back then, Jim Bridenstine, was smart and fully aware of SpaceX's extreme importance for NASA and for the future of NASA and thus he also knew that for the future moon program, SpaceX would just offer the most bang for the buck. I mean, come on, this behemoth here costs NASA $2.9 billion, 
whereas these laughably tiny moon landers would cost NASA twice and three times as much respectively? Seriously? NASA has executed a flawed acquisition for the human landing system program and moved the goalpost at the last minute, is the exact wording of the Blue Origin protest. And Dynetics has issues and concerns with several aspects of the acquisition process as well as elements of NASA's technical evaluation and filed a protest with the GAO to address them, is the wording of Dynetics protest. Both companies already reacted to the GAO decision. A Blue Origin spokesperson said, We stand firm in our belief that there were fundamental issues with NASA's decision, but the GAO wasn't able to address them due to their limited jurisdiction. Less arrogant sounded Dynetic's response, while disappointed, we respect the GAO's determination announced today. So now that the GAO has decided and justice has prevailed, what does that mean for the future of the Artemis program? Well. Now NASA is able to proceed again with SpaceX and continue the development of the Starship Human Landing System, which had been in limbo since Blue Origin and Dynetics had filed their protests back in April. NASA said in a statement, The decision enables NASA to award the contract that will ultimately result in the first crewed demonstration landing on the surface of the Moon under NASA's Artemis plan. And, importantly, the GAO's decision will allow NASA and SpaceX to establish a timeline for the first crewed landing on the Moon in more than 50 years. As soon as possible, NASA will provide an update on the way ahead for Artemis, the human landing system and humanity's return to the Moon. So this means that we can expect an update in the coming months with more precise timelines on when the first unmanned demonstration landing of the lunar starship on the moon will occur and also how the whole architecture for the Artemis program will look. Because it is clear that a starship moon lander with its huge interior volume completely changes the variables for the future of the Artemis program. A starship, for all intents and purposes, is actually already a moon base in itself, since with its thousand cubic meters of interior volume, it already offers more volume for astronauts than the entire ISS. How NASA will utilize Starship, how it will dock with the Gateway, how the mission architecture will look, how often they will land, the timeline of the landings, and so on we probably will all learn in the coming months and you can be sure that we're going to discuss these plans in future videos in great detail. The only chance that Blue Origin now still has to build a second lander for the Artemis program is if Congress would decide to increase NASA's budget by enough to allow choosing a second human landing system. But that is not very likely to happen because we know that the dollars are very loose for blowing up stuff, but very very tight for space exploration. Anyways, it doesn't play a role because SpaceX building the human lander is a complete game changer for the future of human moon exploration. This is now not Apollo 2.0 anymore, as would have been with a Blue Origin or Dynetics lander. No. Now this is something entirely different. NASA will be able to land dozens of astronauts on the moon in one go, when the lunar starship will hopefully one day also not be dependent on the lunar gateway and Orion anymore. Many astronauts could be launched on starship on Earth, rendezvous on the moon with lunar starship, Refuel Starship in orbit with one or more propellant depots that had been placed in lunar orbit beforehand. Land on the moon with two starships. Leave one behind as a lunar base for future missions. Rendezvous with the other starship in moon orbit and get back to Earth. Do that multiple times and very soon you will have a very large moon base. 
the starships that are left behind on the moon can be placed horizontally with a crane, covered in lunar regolith for protection against radiation and micrometeorites, and here's the kicker, you can now even use the giant empty propellant tanks as additional habitation or storage space. One starship can thus yield thousands, not one thousand, but really thousands of cubic meters of habitation space. That is insane. That is how NASA will quickly build a gigantic moon base of epic proportions, which will certainly put the planned Chinese and Russian moon base to shame. So now you see why we think that NASA's decision to award SpaceX as the sole human lander builder is absolutely historic in its proportions, because that will really allow humanity to build truly gargantuan moon bases within a time frame of only 10 to 20 years tops, while simultaneously, yes, simultaneously building Mars bases with Elon's own plans. So humanity will be freaking building Moon and Mars bases at the same time. It cannot be overstated how insanely cool that is. I mean, it's finally happening. Something that has been promised to us since the days of Apollo, where Werner von Braun had plans to build huge Moon bases already in the 70s and land on Mars already in the 80s. Instead, we got Facebook as Buzz Aldrin jokingly said, jokingly but with a very sad undertone because so brutal and so true. But now we are back on track again, back on track to become a truly space-faring civilization and no less thanks to NASA's excellent decision to award the human lander contract only to SpaceX. And thanks to the GAO's just and right decision to deny Blue Origins and Dynetics protests. This really made our day and we can say we are extremely happy, we hope you are happy about this too and we wish you a pleasant day, have fun, enjoy life and see you next time and until then, on to the future.